Schrock Innovations presents the Midwest's number one independent computer repair company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, Des Moines, and across the country via the Schrock desk. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks. Welcome into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I am the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion, Des Moines, all over the place. All right, we got, uh, I was messing around with my uh, my chroma key settings at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations before the show, um, so I apologize if things are a little wonkadoo, uh, but uh, it looks like my green screen's a little weird, so if you want to check that out, it's kind of funny, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. All right, so as we do every week, the number to join us on the program, if you have a question, comment, if you want to be a part of the show in some way, 888 888- Two five zero two zero nine one. That's eight 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 two five zero two zero nine one. 250 Uh Ask a question, make a comment. We'll put you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Yours for anything you'd like at the service center, any of the service centers, works out really well. Now, with that said, there is something that you might want to be aware of that's happening in the service centers right now. Um, we do this in different ways. Uh, in the past, I've always sent an email first and uh, or posted it on Facebook first. We It's been a long time since we've announced it on the radio first. So we've had a few people notice on the website over the last couple days because we did it on the first, so it's been a few days. But right now, preventative maintenance checkups are on sale at Schrock for $59.99 instead of their normal $95 price. So it is a significant discount. Um, it, it's a sale that we try to do once a year or twice a year if we can fit it into the promotional schedule, but for sure once a year. People don't maintenance their stuff. They just don't. They don't understand that you have to keep, you have to keep your stuff working well. And if you don't keep your stuff working well, bad things are going to happen. You're going to end up with you know, problems with your uh your computer running properly problems with your computer, not doing the things you want it to do. And when those kind of things happen, you have to ask yourself, why is this happening? Is it happening because, you know, it's just that, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, we ended up with a problem here or is it happening because there was something else that was not done properly with the computer? So there was something that was not, um, Oh, the word I'm looking for, you screwed up, (laughs) you know, you didn't take care of your stuff. Now, we've all been down that road before. You know, I have some furnace filters that I'm supposed to change them on the first. And I always forget. So by like the seventh of the month, I'm like, well, if I change them now, it's like I'm wasting a week because I'm only going to keep them in for three weeks. And then I'm going to have to change them on the, you know, the first. And well, that's kind of a waste, right? And, you know, February was a short month anyway. So, you know, let's just run those filters for an extra month. Okay, great. Well, here we are, uh, you know, March. And I need to change my filters, guys. I haven't changed the filters. I need to, I'm going to do that. Lovely Kimberly, remind me when I get home that I need to change my filters in the, in the, in the, in the furnaces so that we can make sure that everything is working well. Uh, Because I've got them. They're right there beside it. It's not like I don't have them. I have the filters. I just have to remember to put them in. And it's, it's like that in a lot of things in life, isn't it? You don't really remember when your dental appointment is, or at least I don't until I get that reminder, you know, or the, series of reminders from the dentist office. You know, I, I don't really, you know, a lot of people don't remember birthdays anymore unless social media pops up and tells them, oh yeah, don't forget it's Billy Bob's birthday today. You know, you forget. So we have a lot going on in this world and there's a lot of, a lot of things competing for our attention. I don't know where the maintenance of your laptop and desktop computers fall in the spectrum of things that you are concerned about in life. But for most people, a computer is, it's like a car. You get in your car in the morning, you turn the key, you press the button, whatever your car does, and you expect it to start. The thought of it not starting is so far removed from your brain that the day that it happens, you kind of feel outraged. Like, how dare you do this to me? And you're like, not today, not today. Come on, I have somewhere I need to be. As if, you know, this happens all the time. And, you know, it's just not today. You could do it tomorrow and it's not important. Um, But if we would have maintenance that vehicle, if we would have taken care of it, we could expect it to start every time because we're taking care of it. Your computer is no different, especially your laptop. Uh, We have seen over the past few years, a a lot of people moving away from desktops toward laptops, primarily because of their portability. You can carry them around the house. The advent of wireless internet has been a boon to portable technology, obviously. 
Um, cause you can have it, you can sit on the arm of your couch and do your thing. You can, you can sit in the bathtub with a little tray and do your thing. You can sit in bed and do your thing. You can sit at your desk and do your thing. You know, it's just, you, it, it's really nice, right? The problem is that what people don't realize is that when you take technology like a desktop computer, now your desktop computer, we have seen some filthy mammals. I mean, it, you, you got smokers, you got pets, you got, um, we tried to blow out a computer in Papillion last week. And it was visibly, like, awful. And we hit it with the blower. And this is not like a, a little can of air. This is like a shop vac, okay? We hit it with a shop vac blower. And nothing came out. It just stayed nasty. So Frank goes in there, and he's got a toothbrush, and he's cleaning, the, you know, cleaning out the tines in the fan to make sure it's getting good airflow and you know, cleaning out the critical components with a toothbrush because it's that bad. Now, this is obviously somebody who doesn't care about their maintenance. They weren't even in for maintenance. They were in because they were put, a, put upon that their computer suddenly decided one day to not boot. Oh, I don't understand why this has happened to me. We opened it up and we're like, sweet Mother Mary, like, how did this thing ever boot? Like, oh, my gosh. And, you know, we clean it up. We get the parts replaced that need to be replaced. We put the fans in it and we send it back home as a working functional computer. Now, will that gentleman learn his lesson? Will he come back for maintenance every six months like he's supposed to? Yeah, probably not. You know, people are people. People have habits. Habits don't change unless there's a catalyst to change them. And honestly, you know, a maintenance checkup's not that big of a, a $95 bill isn't really enough to, to move most people's needles to the need to, to spend $95 regularly to prevent, you know, something bigger from happening. There are several purposes that a preventative maintenance checkup serves for your technology. Number one, as we've been talking about in the case of laptops especially, it keeps your stuff working the way you need it to be working. It keeps everything functioning correctly and properly. Number two, it detects things that are failing before they actually fail. Now, we have a, I don't know, I want to call it a cultural bias, but some people have it. Some people don't, but you know, used to be, you, I'm not going to put any money into a computer because I'm, if it breaks, I'll just buy another one and then the new one will be faster than the one I had and it'll cost less. Well, this pandemic that we went through has messed with all of the, the, the ratios and the numbers. And then there's inflation to consider and everything else. The price of technology is supposed to go down about 11% per month or per year annualized for what you get for the technology. So in past years, if you waited two years to buy a computer, you got 22% faster technology for 22% less money. It was a 44% increase in, in purchasing capability for the same amount of money that you were spending because the price never goes down, right? I mean, you just get more now it's about 4% annualized because the inflation and the currency has taken so much of the wind out of the sales. So people are kind of shocked when they go back now and they buy it to go to buy a new computer after two years with their existing computer. And they realize not only is the new computer more expensive than what I paid for last time, it's not even current tech. It's not even, you know, 12th gen. It's maybe 11th gen or 10th gen. And maybe I had an eighth gen, you know, I'm like, come on, you know, I thought at least I would be getting current tech for spending this much money. Oh, no, you can get the current tech, but you got to spend fifteen hundred dollars to get the current tech. And, and so people haven't fully appreciated this fact yet. And I have to tell you guys, the stuff that I'm watching happening, I'm super thankful this week in the news that uh, we heard that uh, Foxconn is going to be building uh, another plant in India this time. Uh, they're, they're basically moving out of China. Um, if this whole Taiwan thing happens with China, even even if Taiwan is not taken, even if it's successful, but just an embargo, think about just blocking ships in planes to and from Taiwan. You have no motherboards. You have no circuit boards. You have no mobile phones. You have no microprocessors. Literally like the entire ecosystem dries up. So if that if that's something that you're concerned about, it, there's a lot of reasons why you, we can sit here and say, Maintenancing your gear is something that you should be doing and you should be doing it regularly. Now, again, reality, reality is we have, it's a terribly inflationary environment. And honestly, especially if you're on a fixed income, you, you got concerns, you know, I'm, I look at my Nana's budget and I'm thinking how, you know, how is anybody on social security alone supposed to get through this? Um, 
it caused me to do a lot of reading and a lot of research and a lot of thinking about my future retirement, about, you know, what, how, does, how does the system actually work? Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that during the Aftershock. The Aftershock is a show that we do uh, after this program. Maybe I'll be able to change my settings and fix whatever I did to screw up my camera here. Um, I got a border and all kinds of stuff going on. But uh, <laughs> but we'll see if we can fix that for the Aftershock because uh, we have some interesting news to share with you during that uh, during that show after the main program at facebook.com slash rock innovations as well. But uh, in the meantime here, this maintenance sale, guys, is going to be going on for the entire month. So number one, I understand that sometimes it's not convenient to go without your computer, especially if you're in the middle of a job search or a special project or a birthday party or something where you need it. You know, I understand that. So we have a few options for you. Number one, we give you the whole month to bring it into the service center. There are no appointments. You don't have to, you don't have to call ahead. You don't have to do anything like that. We give you the whole month to bring it into the service center so that you can drop it off when it's convenient for you. If that it doesn't work for you, we give you the option on our website at schrockinnovations.com, as well as in the service center. You can call in or do it on the website. You can purchase a maintenance checkup prepaid certificate. What this is, is think about it like kind of like a gift card, you're, but you're getting the sale price. You're buying a maintenance checkup at the, at the sale price so that you can use it any time in the next six months. So if you're out of town, if you're on vacation, if you're going on vacation, if if now is just if this quarter is just not a good time for you, you can buy the certificate at schrockinnovations.com and use it any time in the next six months. You don't have to print it and bring it in. We keep it all digital. We have it all in our systems. We know, you know, we know when you buy them and we know when you use them. And so, and if you don't use them, we send you messages like, hey, you've got some that you haven't used. You probably should use them. Um, so right now, we have not sent the email. Right now, we have not sent that we have not posted on Facebook about it. Aside from the video that's going up right now, we have not posted about it. That will all start changing on Monday when emails fly and Facebook messages get posted and people start to realize and then they start to tell their friends and then their friends come in. So, what we have seen in house is a pretty even split between laptops and desktops. We sell more laptops than desktops, but people maintain their laptops less often. I think they, they believe that laptops are, they, they require less maintenance because they're smaller, right? Kind of like a cell phone, you know, you don't maintenance your cell phone, right? I mean, there's not really any, there's no moving parts. It's all microchips. There's nothing you can replace if it's bad. So, I mean, what, why maintenance it, right? You're just going to buy another one if it fails. It's the ultimate in disposable technology, but your laptop is way different. Your laptop has many replaceable components. The most common failure in a laptop is not the hard drive. It's not the memory. It's not the motherboard or the power cord or the DC jack or any of those things or cracked screens even. The most common failure in a laptop is a thermal failure because people use them inappropriately. So when you buy your laptop and you open the box, have you ever noticed like there's a warning sticker or like a card that says like the little caution symbol? And you're like, you know, kind of like on the back of your visor. Now, if I told you, what does the back of your visor say in your car? What's the warning? Some of you might know that it's a rollover warning, like caution, don't do something stupid and turn really, really fast because your car will roll over. And then they used to only put those on SUVs. Now it's, they're like on Hyundais. You know, I bet Teslas have them, you know? Uh, so I don't have a Tesla, so I don't know. Maybe someone with a Tesla could tell me, but nobody pays attention to these warning stickers. So nobody knows, for example, that you're net, you're, they don't call them laptops anymore. They call them notebook computers because you are not supposed to use them on your lap because they cause sterility in men because they're too hot. And, you know, the laptop fries itself because it can't get air. You're not supposed to use them on soft surfaces like comforters or couches or footstools or carpets or any of the places that you probably use your laptop. Um, not supposed to do that. You're supposed to use them on a, on a desk surface, hard surface where the feet can lift it up and you can get proper airflow. Because if we all wanted to sit at a desk, we would have gotten a desktop. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you to use your laptop differently than how you use it because you're just not going to listen. There's no point. But you know, th there's a saying, never give an order that you don't think your army will follow. <laughs> because... Hmm, it, nothing undermines your authority more quickly than giving an order and having it not followed, right? So I'm not going to tell you to, to not use your laptop in all the places that you use it. But what I am going to warn you about is that your laptop needs air and it will run without that airflow. 
and it will get hot. You'll, you'll experience this on the surface of the laptop. The surface will get warm to the touch. That's a telltale sign that your cooling system is not working properly. It's not supposed to be venting heat through the keyboard. Like I'm touching my keyboard right now, and I mean, it's warm, but it's not uncomfortably warm. If you're getting like heat, heat through the keyboard, like, you know, maybe I, I could put like an egg in a pan on there and, and after a few hours, maybe I would have something I could eat. If you're getting that kind of heat, that's a problem. That means you're, you're, you're cooling pipes inside. So the fan can't get air. And so inside these little pipes in there, it's just like your car, basically. There's liquid and the liquid heats up and then it evaporates and it goes into these little fins. And then the air, the fan pushes air between the fins, causing the water to cool which then drips back down so we can repeat the process again. And in the process, it's moving that heat up and out of the laptop, away from the processor, away from the brain, away from the video chip. When your laptop can't get that air for an extended period of time, days, weeks, months of use, the heat pipes will swell. They, they, they're metal, right? So when things get hot, what does metal do? It expands. Now, it's not like one of those dinosaur pills that used to drop in the toilet bowl when you were a kid. You know, it's not like one of those. It doesn't like turn into something like 50 times its size. It just swells just a little bit, just enough to create little micro fissures that the water can evaporate through. So the water that's supposed to stay inside the pipes gets out. And again, it's not like, you know, it's not like a, a, a tidal wave of water coming out of your computer. We're talking about molecules here. It evaporates through the metal. And then you just have a chunk of metal cooling your chips. And guess what? Without that liquid in the center, the metal will conduct heat, but it conducts it evenly all across the surface of the laptop, which is why the surface of your laptop feels so darn hot all the time. And if you put your hand where the air comes out, you feel the air coming out is really hot. It's not because it's really efficient in doing a good job at removing heat. It's because that chunk of metal in there is so flipping hot that you could sit there and blow over it with your mouth and, and the heat that comes off of it would feel, oh, that's working pretty good, you know? And that's why people say, I can hear the fan, I can feel the heat coming off, but my computer still locks up all the time. What's going on? Well, we have to replace, or eventually the fan dies because the fan is running at 100% all the time and it's not intended to do that. And so the fan dies. The customer presents computers overheating because the fan died. We turn around and say, no, if you take it to another computer repair shop in town, they're just going to replace the fan and send you on your way. Hey, fix the fan, customer's happy, everything's great. We're going to look at it and we're going to say, yeah, that fan is pretty bad, but why did the fan go bad? And we're going to say it's probably because the heat pipes are shot. So even though you can't look at the heat pipes and say, oh, uh, your, your discombobulator is discombobulated, when you look at them, you can't tell they're busted. But it's like $12 more. <laughs> so why don't we just, re since, since we're in there anyway, since we is, why don't we just replace it anyway? And so you get a better, a better repair, a better thing. Now that repair is like a $250 repair that you could very easily avoid just by getting a maintenance checkup. So if you are familiar with how maintenance checkups works, you know we're going to get busy. You know that there's going to be a lot of people coming in. But you also know, I'm watching the emails come through, oh, certificates. You also know that you can purchase a certificate on the website at truckinnovations.com. This is like real-time feedback. This is you voting here, guys. These, I, I wonder if you can hear the email, dog. I better shut my email because you might hear like, ba-doom, ba-doom, ba-doom in the video feed and, that could get kind of distracting. So I'm going to shut that. Um, you can purchase the certificates at schrockinnovations.com. Use them at your convenience or just come into the service center. We're open Monday through Saturday from 10 in the morning until 8 in the evening and Sunday from noon to 5. Everywhere but Des Moines. Des Moines hours are a little different. Check out the website. Make sure you're aware of that if you're in the, in the Des Moines area. Des Moines Service Center has been just kicking lately. Uh, corporate services off the hook. Computers off the hook. Uh, bench 60% full in there. That's the fullest it's been since the day we launched that service center, since the grand opening. Uh, so uh, good job for the, the guys in Des Moines there. You're doing great taking care of your people. 888-250-2091. Coming up on the program, McDonald's artificial intelligence goes crazy. What happens when that happens? You know, the, the, the computer box lady, when you're ordering your food, she apparently is trying to pad sales a little bit. Um, storage capacity. Is it keeping up with the other technology? I mentioned all the stuff that's supposed to get faster and better every time. What about storage? Is that keeping up or are we still kind of in the dark ages there? Also, has your iPhone been charging more slowly than you would like lately? 
Well, guess what? The last update that came through turned on a super secret setting to slow down your charging. I'm going to tell you where it is and how to turn it off coming up on Compute This. Drive Advisor is a free program from Truck Innovations that monitors your hard drive's health and tells you if it's going bad. Download it for free at driveadvisor.com. Schrock Innovations has spent nearly two decades working to make your technology life easier. And SchrockInnovations.com is no exception. Now you can order new modular computers and solid-state laptops directly from our website, find innovative new technologies like our modular storage devices, and get free help and tips. Take a look at the special section to find sales on one-of-a-kind items, display models, refurbished units, and our latest special offers. Swing by the Compute This page to watch TV segments and archived radio shows or even get one-on-one -on -one help through the Schrock Desk. As always, we respect your privacy, so we secure our website with the latest encryption technology and only the most secure payment methods. You can pick up your purchases at any of our three service centers or have them shipped directly to your door. SchrockInnovations.com makes technology simple. It's what we do. Compute this pro tip 843. Of all computer failures, the scariest and most expensive is the hard drive. But there are some steps you can take to save money and save your data before it's too late. Detecting failures early is important, so install a free utility like DriveAdvisor from driveadvisor.com to monitor your hard drive's health and receive warnings when there's a problem. But most of all, hard drive failures happen slowly, so early detection is key to reducing the repair bill. Second, if your hard drive makes any unusual noises, immediately turn off your computer and do not turn it on again. These issues are physical problems, and the more you try to use it, the worse the damage becomes. Remember that most computer repair shops do not have the specialized equipment needed to recover data from a failed drive. Never open your drive or allow anyone else to do so. Open drives always cost more to recover. Schrock does not charge for data recovery evaluations and quotes, so let the local pros look at your drive before you make any recovery decisions. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Alrighty, guys, welcome back into Compute This. Uh, as uh, people at Facebook.com slash Rock Innovations have pointed out, it appeared that I was phasing into another dimension through the chroma key and the green screen. Um, all right, so before the show, and we'll talk about this during the Aftershock, I was screwing around with some settings because there's, there's some announcements to be made. So I'm screwing around with some settings for a different background. That's, that's completely different from what we have here on Compute This. The Compute This background on the video is a white background by design. This studio was never intended to be used for video. In fact, there's a saying in the industry. If I wanted to be on TV, I wouldn't have a face for radio. You know? So most radio guys don't want cameras in the studios. Because that means you have to, like, shave and you got to, like, dress decently and, you know... You know, we all know Gary's in here every week with his tie on and, you know, doing his, you know, his best uh, Rat Pack impersonation. But, you know, for, for me, you know, it's like, you know, I put the camera in here and all of a sudden I have to screw the light bulbs back in because the guys are unscrewing the light bulbs. It's too bright in here, you know. <laughs> I'm like, no, I need more light for my chroma key. I'm actually going to have to bring in ring lights to light the, the background better. It's going to be, it's ridiculous. So uh, I'll share it all with you during the break, uh, during the aftershock here after the program. But in the meantime... The number to join us on the program, if you want to be a part of the show and win yourself a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate, potentially, is 888-250-2091. 888-250-2091. Now, have you guys been through a McDonald's drive through recently? Uh, you know, it's scary and it's absolutely brilliant at the same time. So you pull up to the drive through and not all the McDonald's are this way, but some, most of the ones in Omaha are. And when you pull up to the drive-thru, the robot voice is the super pleasant, you know, kind of female, I think, robot voice is like, hi, how can I help you? And you're like, you're a robot because no one working at McDonald's is that pleasant. <laughs> there, there are some pleasant people at McDonald's. I'm being silly. But uh, so how can I help you? And you're like, okay. So, you know, the first time you order, you're like, I would like, it's like you're, you're dictating to your phone, chicken nuggets, 10 piece in a meal. Oh, shoot, I can't say that. I need a 10-piece chicken nugget meal. And then the computer's like, and what do you want to drink with that? I'm like, oh, wow. Diet Coke. Okay, will that be all? That is all. 
you know, you're very, you're very like I'm talking to a computer. And then one day it just happens. You roll up to the speaker and you forget that you're talking to a computer. Maybe your kids are bugging you in the background. Maybe the phone is ringing. Maybe you're thinking about all the, all the things you have to do in your day. And it's like, hi, how can I help you? And you're like, need a sausage, egg and cheese McGriddle, please. And that'll do it. Your total is blah, please drive around. And you're like, whoa, I just talked to that thing like it was a human. And it got my order right. You gotta be kidding me. Well, apparently my experience with the, with the speaker box lady has been really good. Um, some other people, not so much. Um, so basically there's been a lot of talk about chat GPT and, and everything like that going on about uh, artificial intelligence. But um, there was a woman named Caitlin who did not order $254 worth of chicken McNugget meals. <laughs> Whoops. And there's Madeline who was wanting a large cup of water and a cup of ice cream, which is kind of a weird thing. Like I want one, one cup of water and one cup of ice cream. Maybe she, maybe she's on like a keto diet. She doesn't want the cone. Uh, can you eat soy when you're on like carnivore? I don't know. I don't know. That's all that. It's not real ice cream. You know that, right? Um, so she wants a cup of water, a large cup of water and one cup of ice cream. And she discovered that it comes with butter. <laughs> Cause <laughs> robots. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's, the story I'm reading here says, of course, it's amusing. And of course it reminds you of every single conversation you've ever had with a robot switchboard. You know, it's like, would you like to talk with a human? Yes. Before we connect you to a human, we have to ask you a few questions. Oh my goodness. So this stuff is, is it, it helps us a little bit, but it doesn't quite get the job done. But here's the thing guys. Um, and, and one of the things that we're going to explore going forward in the future, maybe during the aftershock is the difficulty in hiring people and the difficulty in retaining people. Some of it goes to uh, skill development. Uh, kids are coming out of school without any skills, any actual skills. They know all their pronouns really well um, and they respect everybody around them, which is great, but they can't count back change. Uh, <laughs> exasperation across the room. Um, you know, but uh, how, who uses change anymore, right? Oh, okay, you know, that's great. So they can't, they, they don't know, like my son overdrew his checking account for the first time because he didn't understand the difference between an authorization and a charge. So he, he bought some Nike sneakers. They put an authorization on his account, took the money out. But Nike took so long to ship those darn sneakers that the money came back into his account because the authorization expired. He thought, hey, yeah, I got more money from somewhere. Woo! Money fairy must have come. Dad's been here. I don't know. And then he went and spent it again. And then Nike shipped his shoes and took the money. And then boom, negative. The bank's like, oh, Mr. Schrock, oh, we were calling about one of your accounts is negative. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, what's going on? Looks like uh, the Jacob account is $27 overdrawn. And you're like, oh, yeah, all right. And, and the best part was he thought I was super mad about it. He thought I was so mad. I'm so sorry, dad. I'm like, let this be a lesson to you, son. You know? <laughs> It's like, it's not a big deal. It's $27. I took care of it, but you owe me $27. You know, so the kids coming out don't have any skills. And then, then you've got people who are just fi not financially literate. They're not wise to the ways of the world. I have an employee who left Schrock Innovations this week. One of these, and this guy was not, not a minor player. Um, he was on track. He was going to be the next regional manager. Like this guy, we have one of those right now. We need two. Um, but you don't just hire a regional manager at Schrock. You have to build them. You have to make them. And this guy had all of the skills to do it. He could handle the people. He could handle this. He took the job seriously. He could handle the customers. He, uh, he knew how to generate results. Like it was, he had all the pieces of the puzzle and he left Schrock this week to pressure wash dumpsters for a living. <laughs> I am not joking. Like those are the moments in life where you have to stop and reflect, you know, like, <laughs> is there something I'm doing wrong? <laughs> it's like when you'd rather go pressure wash dumpsters than work for me, maybe there's a problem here. I don't know. Um, no. The, and what happened was the, the guy that hired him was a friend of his, gave him a $10,000 hiring bonus. And there was some stuff I had to sign, but I didn't really read it, but oh my gosh. So are you the dumpster washing slave now? Like how many years do you have to work for this guy? Before you're, you don't have to pay back the 10 grand if you quit. That's what that is. That's not a hiring bonus. It's a retention device. And people just, you know, kids just don't know these things. So you get somebody who doesn't know these things. And he was super, if he would have said something to us, I am all for 
people at Schrock moving up and moving on. That's how we get guys that end up at AMD and how we get guys that work for Google and Apple and places like that. A lot of Schrock employees have gone on to do amazing things in their careers. That's part of growing and that's part of life. But when you trade me in to wash dumpsters and then they're like, well, that's just how we're going to get started generating cash flow. You see, we're going to move up to trash cans at one. Hold me back, baby. Oh my gosh. You mean like the guy on my Facebook neighborhood group that wants to, will come over with his pressure washer and a scoop of Clorox and do my trash cans for 25 bucks. You're going to be that guy. No, we're going to get a truck that does it. No, I'm sure that's, that's going to work out real well. God bless you. I hope I wish you the best. Um, but wow, you know, so that's, that's what employers are dealing with in the economy, guys. That's why you get speakers at McDonald's that are like, hi, how can I help you today? So if they do try to order you $287 in chicken nuggets, try to take that in stride. I'm sure there's a human at the window that when they go to take your money <laughs> and she's like, you need how many chicken nuggets? Like they're back there. Like, do we, how many, do, how big is the fryer? Do we have to, how do you cook that many chicken nuggets? I mean, what is it like six bucks for 10? Something like that. So, I mean, $287 of chicken nuggets. I mean, that's a couple sacks of nugs. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of nugs. 888-250-2091. <laughs> I am way late for the break, guys. We're going to take a bottom of the hour break. But when we come back, storage capacity. Is it keeping up with Moore's Law? We're going to tell you. It sounds really boring, but actually it's really cool when you hear about what it took to store stuff like 20 years ago compared to today. And the question is, Everybody knows that computers are way faster than they were, but is storage keeping up? We're going to tell you coming up next on Compute This. Schrock Innovation's Data Recovery Lab saves the data the other guys can't. The next time your hard drive, camera card, or flash drive fails, let Schrock get your data back. Some people like desktops for their power and upgradability, but nothing rivals a laptop for computing on the go. But why should you have to sacrifice performance for portability? The innovators at Schrock want our customers to have it all. So we created a new kind of laptop, the Solid State Laptop from Schrock Innovations. Solid State Laptops are built using the same frame and main boards as regular laptops, but we've removed half of the moving parts while more than doubling the computer's speed. The result? Laptops that boot to Windows in six seconds or less, respond instantly to your commands, and can survive drops that put most laptops into the data recovery lab. Starting at only $4.99, Solid State Laptops give you speed, reliability, durability, and performance for the same price most people pay for a cheap disposable laptop. The next time you're looking for a laptop, check out the Solid State Laptops at SchrockInnovations.com or visit any of our service centers. Simple, solid, fast technology is what we do at Schrock. Compute this Pro Tip 578. Technology is constantly changing, so how can you tell when the time has come to recycle your old outdated computer and invest in a new one? Experts have rules of thumb and formulas, but Schrock believes the answer is simple. You should replace your old computer when it can no longer do the things you need in a secure way. For example, you should not be using operating systems like Windows XP or Vista because they're no longer maintained by Microsoft and they're not secure. And if your computer cannot run Windows 10, it's probably time to begin saving for a replacement. If your existing computer requires a repair and that cost is 50% or more more of the cost of a new computer, it might be time to consider a replacement. But keep in mind, additional costs like data transfers and important software you have to upgrade like genealogy software or Quicken. And also keep in mind that modern computers are engineered to last 18 months for a normal user. And don't worry, you are considered a normal user. Schrock modular PCs and solid-state laptops are specifically designed to last four to six years for that same normal user, saving your family money and time. This pro tip brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. News, I'm Karen McHugh. While the people of East Palestine, Ohio, continue to deal with the fallout from last month's train derailment, another freight train has jumped the tracks in their state. The Clark County Sheriff's Office says emergency personnel and hazmat crews responded around 5 Saturday evening to the second Norfolk Southern train to derail in Ohio in a month. No injuries were reported, and emergency officials in Clark County said there were no spillages detected. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg saying on Saturday night he was in contact with Ohio Governor DeWine and offered federal support. Fox's Ted Lindner, former President Donald Trump, the winner of this year's CPAC presidential straw poll Saturday, where he addressed supporters. I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis came in second. America is listening to Fox News. 
Now, the News Radio 1110 KFAB Weather Watch. Sunday will start cloudy, then gradually becoming mostly sunny and a high of 60 degrees. On Monday, mostly sunny and breezy, a high of 49. And on Tuesday, mostly cloudy and a high near 45. I'm Tim Burrow. All righty, folks, welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. The number to join us on the program today, 888-250-2091. If you are joining us for the first time and you have never heard this program before, I want to tell you welcome. Thanks for coming in. We're glad you're here. You know, we do talk about technology. We talk about what's happening in the world around us with technology. We try to have a little bit of fun with it. You know, where else are you going to go to hear dumpster washing stories? I mean, it, it, that's, that, that's just some high-quality radio right there. Mm -hmm. So Aaron comes to the rescue here at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. Uh, Aaron says, I worked for McDonald's in the 90s, and people who wanted a cup of ice cream were usually driving stick shifts so they couldn't hold an ice cream cone while driving. Huh. And it reminds, and then that fired a random neuron in my brain to an interview that I heard this week with um, an electric car company CEO who said that basically um, electric cars are the future, that – it's inevitable that everyone will be driving them. He goes, it's going to happen exactly the same way that the automatic transmission happened. And then it's like, you know, I never really thought about that. You know, where did all the stick shifts go? And he said, it used to be in like the, you know, the nineties and the early two thousands. If you wanted to save a few bucks on a car, you could buy a stick shift and, and, you know, not get the automatic transmission. Well, then the car companies sold so few stick shifts that they said, why are we even screwing with this? And they just went full automatic. And now you can't really buy a stick shift unless you're buying like a, a performance sports car. You're not going to get a stick shift anymore. So he said he said that it's going to be the same way with electric cars, that, that so many people are going to want electric cars that eventually the demand for internal combustion engines will fall off to the point that you won't have it. Again, side note, another random neuron here. I was at Hobby Lobby with my four-year-old son who immediately said, okay, mommy, we can go to Hobby Hobby. He calls it Hobby Hobby. We can go to Hobby Hobby, but we, uh, but can I go to the toy section? And so I'm like, I'll take him to the toy section. We'll look at all the toys. And he ends up buying a truck or something. But he was sure looking. They had a model internal combustion engine that was actually something you built with your hands. It was a STEM thing. And it ran. And I'm like, ages six and up. And I'm like looking at my four-year-old like, God, daddy wants this toy. Why do I want to build an internal combustion? I'd love to know how that works. And so I'm just saying the car guy might be wrong if Hobby Hobby is selling model internal combustion engines. Now, I guess they also sell model P-51 airplanes, but you know, <laughs> who knows how the world's going to end up. 888-250-2091. So storage capacity. This is an exciting topic. I know you're all super thrilled to be talking about hard drives and floppy drives and raids and NASs and all kinds of things like that. But let me, let me rewind the tape a little bit all the way back to the 1980s. In the 1980s, you could get a storage drive, forget how it worked. It was a magic box. It was a storage drive that was the size of two microwaves. Now they don't mention if this is like the Amazon basics microwave or if the grandma's going to cook a turkey in it microwave. Remember when people used to think you could cook a turkey in a microwave? Have you ever tried to cook a turkey in a microwave? I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so it was the size of two microwaves and the full weight of a refrigerator. For $10,000 in 1980s money, which, you know, translated into the current economy is about 297400 No, I'm just kidding. It's about $27,000 in today's money. It held 470 megabytes. Not gigabytes, not terabytes megabytes, roughly the equivalent to 400 floppy disks, modern, well, modern, semi-modern floppy disks, 470 megabytes is half of a gigabyte. Most of your flash drives <laughs> are like 32 gig. You know, I mean, this was, this, this was the weight of a refrigerator, two microwaves, for $27,000 in today's money. So that's where we were at in 1980. Back in the 80s, um, you could get a Fujitsu Eagle drive. It was about the size of the two microwaves. This is the drive we were talking about. Um, the purchase 
this this guy bought two 16 terabyte hard drives for about 500 bucks. The purchase that he made in modern hard drives was 68,000 times more storage for one forty fifth of the price. So when you think about Moore's law, what is Moore's law? Moore's law, Moore was a guy that worked for Intel and he came up with the concept that basically every year you're going to get double the processing capability in modern technology for half of the price. So every year your processing capabilities will increase by a fold of a hundred percent and your cost per unit of computing capability will drop by 50%. Okay. Every year. So think about that compounding over years. If you applied Moore's law to storage devices, to hard drives, it would be 800%. I mean, it is, it's a factor of 800% more than processing. So in other words, storage is getting cheaper and cheaper and more capable and more capable far more quickly than our ability to process data, which might explain why there's so many data centers all over the place. All of a sudden there's so much stuff getting stored because the cost of storing it is so low. I mean, okay. If you have a house and you fill your house full of garbage, not actual garbage, but you know, mementos stuff that you, you think you want to keep because like my dad used to say, if you keep anything long enough, it's valuable someday. Well, and he kept everything for a long time. <laughs> There's a reason that when we got rid of his house, we just found an investor and said, you clean it out. And then we, we've taken what we want. You clean out the rest um, because everything will be valuable someday. These 1970s national geographics, they're going to be, they're going to be valuable someday. You know, and it's like, sure, dad, you know, maybe like, you know, when they don't make magazines anymore and everything is like, a computer screen like that's ever going to happen. Oh, wait, shoot. All right. Anyway, uh, moving on, you know, if you have a house like that full of stuff, but the cost of putting all that stuff in a storage unit is like a dollar a year. Why would you throw anything away? If you were someone like my dad, you just can, you continue to buy more storage space dollar a year. It's not a big deal. Buy more storage space. Well, that's what's happening here. You don't, you don't have to think people used to be really freaked out about how full their hard drives get. Now this is part of the maintenance checkup guys. When you come in for a preventative maintenance checkup on your computer on special right now, by the way, at all the Schrock service centers, certificates are available on the website. If you come in for a maintenance check, one of the things that we check on your solid state hard drive is do you at least have 20% available free space? Why is that solid state hard drives when they fill over 80% disproportionately degrade? That's a fancy language for saying, they done break quick. So you don't want your, your solid state hard drive to be over 80% full. But because we've become a culture where we do not, where we become digital hoarders, we don't throw anything away. We don't uninstall anything. Or we got tricked into buying a computer with a tiny little hard drive in it to begin with. And then, you know, you could, you could, you know, you could have the same amount of possessions as Jesus as he walked the earth and fill up the hard drive. You know, your sandals are too big. You need, you need smaller sandals, you know. If that's you, well, we just put a bigger hard drive in. Or if it's too full, you might say, oh, I need to get rid of some stuff, but I don't know what to get rid of. Or, you know, my genealogy is taking up all the space. You have a computer to do the things with it that you want to do with it. So, yes, while storage has gotten way less expensive over time and way faster over time, you know, we, we – I can't tell you how many times we've had a customer come in with a mechanical hard drive that we've replaced with a solid state. And it was literally like breathing new life into their computer. Now we have those customers coming back two, three, four years later for a maintenance checkup. And again, not only do we check the capacity of the drive, but we check how fast the drive is running. What is the speed of your hard drive? Because solid state hard drives slow down over time. They wear out before they fail. So when you, when you bought that hard drive, it was rocking 1,200 megabytes a second. So let's, for, let's drop all the techies and say, when you got that bad boy, it was going 1,200 miles an hour. It was fast. So when you bring it in for a maintenance checkup and it clocks in at 160 miles an hour, do you think there's a reason? Like, is, is Fat Albert in the back seat? Like, what's going on? Why is it running so slow? Can you say that anymore? Is it, is, can you say Fat Albert anymore? I watched that show when I was a kid. So anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, a uh, little uh, digression there. Did I just get canceled? Oh, shoot. The Facebook feed failed. Why did that happen? Oh, boy. And I didn't even talk about vaccines yet. Oh, come on. 
first peer-reviewed study came out about those this week, guys. Australia. We'll talk about it during the aftershock. That will get canceled, by the way. 888-250-2091. I guess what I'm getting at, guys, is when you come in for a maintenance checkup, we're going to check your hard drive because the cost of replacing your hard drive with a faster, larger, more capable hard drive is so inexpensive that it's probably you're not going to want to throw stuff away that you want to keep. You're probably going to get a bigger drive, but you don't need to do that until you need to do that. And part of the maintenance checkup is us checking to see if you need to do that. So check it out. Maintenance checkups are on special at Schrock right now. Normally they're $95. So in this inflationary environment where nobody is giving out coupons anymore, although I'm starting to see a little bit of a, of a comeback on that. Uh, my cigar retailer seems to be very intent on sending me coupons. Apparently, people are cutting the vices out of the budget because they keep sending me better and better coupons. And I keep thinking, if I just wait a little bit longer, maybe I'll get a better coupon, you know? Um, well, there isn't going to be a better coupon for a maintenance checkup. It's the same sale. It's been every year going back in time. Uh, the, the price has gone up over time of a maintenance checkup as the price of everything has gone up, labor especially. But the discount has also gone up to match. So you are paying the same inflation-adjusted price for a maintenance checkup that you were way back 22 years ago when we started doing this. So right now, they're normally $95. They're $69.99 on special at Schrock. You can come in. No appointment is required. We're open Monday through Saturday from 10 in the morning until 8 in the evening, Sunday from noon to 5, except Des Moines. Des Moines is closed on Sunday, so make sure you're aware of that. Um, if that doesn't work for you for some reason, maybe you're on the way to church and you're like, oh, I'm going to forget like Thor and his furnace filters. Uh, if that's the case, just go onto the website, schrockinnovations.com, and you can purchase a certificate right on the website. There's a rotator, big rotator image right there you can click on, takes you right to the sale. That way you don't have to go through the menus if you don't want to. But the price is marked down on the website there as well. 888 888- Two five zero two zero nine one. That's the number to join us on the program. I am going to check that phone number during the commercial break because we haven't got a single flipping call, and I'm not sure. If you ever the phone broken? What's going on here? Nobody wants a twenty five dollars certificate to go toward a maintenance checkup. I don't. I don't understand this. Well, you could get one pretty easily if you just called in eight 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 two five zero two zero nine one. We're going to take our final break of the program. When we come back, though, a lot of you out there use Apple devices. And for some reason, people think I'm anti-Apple, but, you know, I have a blended household. You know, I've got Android devices. We've got Apple devices. We have Microsoft devices. We have you know, all – I don't have any Linux devices, I guess, unless you count my Raspberry Pi, which I never use. But anyway, I digress. We have a blended household. So I have a lot of people in my house that are using iPhones and a lot of kids that are using them. And when the battery goes poop on those and you want to charge it up quick, you know, you, you have a backup battery, you put it on the charger. And meanwhile, you know, the kid's doing their thing, whatever. If you have noticed, like I noticed, that your Apple technology was charging more slowly than it has in the past, I thought we had bad batteries. I, I actually bought another iPad for my son because I thought that, you know, his screen was cracked, his battery shot. It's got a kind of a little warp to the, the, the housing it's beyond something that we should probably repair at this point. We should probably get him a new one. And it's like so old, it's got the round button on it still. Uh, so it's probably time for a new one. So, you know, we get him the, the new iPad. Of course, he doesn't want to use the new one because it doesn't have a round button, but that's beside the point. But it turns out we didn't have a bad battery. We just had a setting on an update that was turned on that was limiting his charging capability. The same thing is probably happening. In fact, I'll guarantee you, if you haven't turned it off, your Apple devices, whether they are phones or iPads, it's happening to you right now. So I'm going to tell you what the setting is, what it's intended to do, how it's causing issues, and then, as we'll all agree, how to turn it off. Coming up next on Compute This. Schrock Innovations repair technicians also <laughs> make course. house calls. Make an appointment and let us bring our award-winning computer support right to your home or business. In 1798, Eli Whitney's Connecticut Musket Factory was the first business in North America to use replaceable parts in a firearm. Before Eli's factory, if your musket broke, you had to send it away to an expert gunsmith for repairs or just toss it and buy a new musket. Technology manufacturing has come a long way since the 18th century, but you wouldn't know it by looking at today's big box store computers. 
Dell, HP, Sony, and other manufacturers continue to take away your freedom to upgrade and repair your computer by eliminating expansion and repair options. Some desktops are even powered by a tiny laptop adapter. Schrock Innovations believes in Eli Whitney's idea of interchangeable and replaceable components, and that's why our custom-built modular computers last longer and cost less to repair than computers you see at big box stores. Ask your friends and family how often they replace their box store computers, and they'll probably tell you every couple of years. And what do they do with the old machines? They just get thrown out like broken muskets. Imagine a place where your computer's problems can be fixed quickly and inexpensively. Imagine keeping your computer for six years or more. You are imagining the kind of computers we build every day at Schrock Innovations. Our modular systems last longer, perform faster, and cost less over the long term than anything you can buy at a big box store. While the talented technicians at Schrock Innovations can't make you a musket even if they tried, our commitment to the freedom offered by modular computers is the modern-day extension of Eli's innovative musket factory. We think Eli Whitney would be proud, and you can take pride in owning a small piece of American innovation. The modular computer from Schrock Innovations. Compute this Pro Tip 178. Those little life-saving surge protector strips are vital to your computer's health and should be used whenever possible, even for laptops. As computers get smaller and more powerful, they're also becoming more sensitive to dirty power, and your power is a lot dirtier than you might think. Even if you have a whole home surge protection, most power surges are generated within your own home. If you've ever vacuumed and seen the lights get dimmer and brighter, you created a surge. Surge protectors can only absorb so much energy measured in joules. When that capacity is exhausted, your surge protector becomes a glorified extension cord and needs to be replaced. You should always look for surge protectors that give audible alerts when they're no longer able to protect your equipment. Schrock recommends these because the lights on most strips are just power lights and they don't tell you when it's time to replace the unit. If in doubt, replace your surge protectors annually to keep your expensive TVs, computers, and other electronic equipment safe. This pro tip is brought to you by Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Alrighty, guys, and like that, Shazam! You know, you'd think I wasn't asking for calls the whole show, because now the phone lines are completely full. Completely full. So we're going to get to as many calls as we can here, so I'm going to do the Apple thing first, because I know a lot of people are listening for that, and if I put it off to the end, I won't get it done. So, Apple has a clean energy setting that has now been installed in their latest update. What it has done is it has turned, and it's on by default, and what it does is it slows down your iPhone's charging or your iPad's charging when clean energy is not available. So, for example, uh, in the Omaha Public Power District grid, about 30%, 33 35% of our energy is quote-unquote renewable, and it comes primarily from wind generation. So if the wind ain't blowing, your iPhone charges slower because it's charging. You have a coal-fired iPhone in Nebraska. And so this clean energy setting is intended to decrease the demand on uh, non-renewable energy and, and make util use of storing renewable energy. Think about it like a lot of the different batteries out there storing all this renewable energy when it's available because that's the problem. When the wind blows, you can use it, but it's very difficult to store it. So what you need to do to turn this setting off, because I think we can all agree when we put our phones on the chargers, we want them to charge. This is a quality of life issue. And this is the big problem that I have with all of the renewable energy industry, whether it's... Um, EVs, which are really cool, whether it's solar, whether it's wind, whether it's geothermal, whether it's anything. If I have to change the way I live because the way that we produce energy is changing, that's a fail. You don't understand that the whole, if you're lowering your standard of living in exchange for this nothing burger, that's a fail. So let's unfail your iPhone right now. So how do you do this? What we're going to do is we're going to go we're going to go to the settings. So if you have a pencil, you write this down, or if you have your phone out, you can do it right here with me. But we're going to we're going to go to, turn your phone on, okay? Go to settings. And under settings, you're going to select battery. So go to settings, then battery, and then go to battery, health and charging. So go to settings, go to battery, and then select battery, health and charging. And uh, like the second slider switch down, 
um, is something called clean energy charging, and it's turned on right now on your device. If you want to go ahead and turn that off, your stuff will charge at the same speed all the time, regardless of what kind of energy is available. I asked my wife, what happens if the wind's not blowing and I'm trying to charge the kid's device off of a backup battery? Does it charge more slowly? The answer is yes. So there you go, guys. You can turn off the clean energy charging on your Apple device that was turned on without any notification to you or permission or anything like that because yay, planet. 888-250-2091. Gordon, welcome to the program. How can I help you uncompute this? Good morning, sir. How are you? Very good. So remind me, please. When is kind of the drop dead date for uh, the new Windows program? Yeah, it's uh, you have until October of 2025 for Windows 10, and then Windows 10 is gone. Right now, if you want to purchase a device that has Windows 10 on it, uh, you're going to have a problem because Microsoft no longer sells it. And so uh, literally what's in the ecosystem right now is all that will ever be in the ecosystem for Windows 10. So if you have a, a program that requires Windows 10 you should, and you're going to buy a new computer, you should do that like now. Uh, we're selling computers to ConAgra because they can't get them from Dell with Windows 10. Right. Okay, thank you. So here's what I'm what I'm wondering about is you may recall the computers that you have you actually put your pinkies on here a year ago or oh, yeah. so computers that I have. I'm really dragging my feet at throwing those things in the trash can because they're pretty incredible computers. That brings me to your computers that I've have over the years have bought several of your winter your uh, holiday specials. Mm -hmm. Um are you playing possibly with the idea of building your um, holiday specials early enough that a person can buy one before the the Windows 10 ones die? Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, we uh, 2025, we're going to build one here in 2023. We're going to build another one in 2024. Um, and then October of 25... I guess I don't know if we, you know, we're going to launch it earlier or not. We're going to do something for that for sure. Thank you for the call, Gordon. I appreciate you joining us on the program. I apologize. i got to keep moving here. Uh, but we'll do something for that. We, we always do something for those things. Uh, Dave, real quick, you have 30 seconds. How can I help you uncompute this? Uh, on my iPhone, wherever, I, it shows the maximum capacity at 87%. Now I've had it for a couple years. Yeah. Is there a way to get that back to 100% or is it just it's lost? You just got to you have to replace the hardware. You got to you got to open the iPhone and replace the battery with a new one. Um, so over okay, I it's just basically how you charge it, right? Not leaving it on a charger. No, nope, it, it's natural wear. And thanks for the call, Dave. Natural wear and tear of lithium ion. It wears out over time. Doesn't matter how you charge it. Doesn't matter how you handle it. There, are, you can handle it more aggressively or less aggressively, but they always wear down over time. Ed, congratulations. You're the winner of the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Uh, guys, stay on the line there. I'll take your calls off the air here. Uh, but we'll be back here in a few minutes for the After Schrock, and we'll see you next weekend for another edition of Compute This. From the Amish Furniture of Nebraska Studio, your home for made-in-the-USA furniture, this is news.